Welcome aboard to Vancouver, British Columbia. Here is a beginner's pilot guide to the basics of Vancouver, focusing on the region of Vancouver Harbor and Falls Creek. If you enjoy this video, remember, land was created to provide a place for boats to visit. So be sure to let me know in the comments which port you would like me to highlight next. Vancouver is located just north of the U.S. state of Washington and is the main urban center of Western Canada. This makes it a great final destination for a trip through the Pacific Northwest or the perfect stop on the way to Alaska. Vancouver found its name after George Vancouver of the Royal Navy who surveyed the coast in the 1790s. Fueled by the gold rush in the 1860s, Vancouver was originally a small sawmill town. Most of the industry in the area relied on the region's natural resources, primarily being lumber. With the completion of the Panama Canal in 1914, Vancouver became a prosperous port and was able to sell its lumber to Europe and the east coast of the U.S. By the 1930s, it became the largest Canadian port on the west coast and was a prominent shipbuilding port for the Canadians during World War II. After World War II, trade opened up to Asia to create the harbor we see today. Now, the Port of Vancouver is mainly popular due to its transport of raw materials. It is also a major hub for the cruise ship industry, utilizing the Deepwater Harbor for tourist access to Alaska. There are also many private boating marinas around the city that are popular destinations for pleasure boaters. The geography of Vancouver has it surrounded by water. Vancouver has the Burroughed Inlet and Vancouver Harbor to the north, where the city's shipping industry is located. To the west, it has the Salish Sea, and the Strait of Georgia, with Vancouver Island across the water, and to the south, it has the Fraser River Delta. Of these features, Vancouver Island has the biggest impact on the area by forming a natural sea barrier protecting the mainland from the northern storms of the Pacific. However, there is still a lot of water between the island and the mainland in the Strait of Georgia. This gives the wind enough of a fetch to create a dangerous sea state similar to that of large lakes. In this area, you trade large swells for large short period wind chop. Vancouver sits in a bit of a converging area for the wind. On some days, it can come down the strait from the north, whereas on others, it'll curve around the southern tip of Vancouver Island and come up from the south. Because of this, the wind in the area changes day by day. Vancouver can be accessed from two channels, one from the south and one from the north. The southern channel is the Strait of Juan de Fuca, which is also divides Canada and the United States. This strait is also how you would access Seattle, Washington. To the north, there are a series of islands that divide the Strait of Georgia and form the famous Inside Passage that runs from Seattle to Skagway, Alaska. Tides should be considered when transiting these islands and channels to avoid hazardous and conflicting tidal currents. Tides in the region can have a profound effect depending on the time of year. The Vancouver Fraser Port Authority also recommends being aware of the tidal current in the Burrard Inlet and Inner Vancouver Harbor. They offer a great safe boating PDF shown here and linked below in the description that is a perfect resource for recreational boaters. Outside of different speed zones shown on the diagram, it is important to notice the first and second narrows. These are areas of the harbor where the water is funneled and creates strong currents. Another potential hazard for unfamiliar boaters are float planes. Notice the area in Coal Harbor designated for float plane landings. If you find yourself transiting this area, consider looking up as well as forward. Be sure to maintain slow boating speeds in this area as boat wakes can clip the bottom of some plane propellers. We may be familiar with what boat propellers can cost, but it's best we don't find out what a plane's propeller can cost. To finish up the topic of geography in the region, let's discuss the weather. The Vancouver region has mild temperatures, however colder than most popular boating areas. Averages of high 70 degrees Fahrenheit in summer and low 30 degrees in winter, with heavy rainfall in the winter months. Snow is also possible in these winter months, as you can see from the footage. The boating season for this region is the same as Seattle and the Pacific Northwest as a whole. Most of the recreational boating occurs during the summer months. Resources to boaters are plentiful in the region due to its rich boating history. Most recreational marinas are located in False Creek and Coal Harbor. These areas offer the most protection from the weather and have fuel docks available. There is a beautiful yacht club on the coast of English Bay near the commercial anchorage. This club has a private marina and an amazing stretch of beaches. It has a view of the mountains and city along with cargo ships in transit awaiting to unload. There are a number of pump out locations in both False Creek and Coal Harbor with False Creek also offering a mobile pump out service. 
This information and more is available on the City of Vancouver's website, which is also linked in the description. Along with pump-out information, they also offer information on anchoring, boating safety, and docks and boat ramps in the Coal Harbor and False Creek waterways. Across Vancouver, there are lots of shipyards for necessary repairs. I cannot attest to the quality of work of any of these places, but from what I have seen, they have any length and type of vessel covered. From old and closed shipyards in False Creek to the C-SPAN Mega Yacht Yard in North Vancouver, I'd be surprised if there wasn't somebody for every problem. All of Vancouver is heavily sprinkled with every type of vendor you would need, and through research, many of the marinas offer directories for repair work. Lastly, you've made it to Vancouver and you want to have some fun. And nothing is more fun than a great public transportation system. Transport around Vancouver is readily available, and what is awesome about it is that a lot of this transportation is on boats. In False Creek, there is a small vessel ferry system that takes people to and from different areas of False Creek to explore. With a total of 13 vessels, they are constantly running throughout the weekends, are inexpensive, and have nine dock locations to stop at. The most popular of which being Granville Island. Granville Island is man-made from the material dredged out of False Creek. And while that doesn't sound initially appealing, it has been fully developed and is home to the Granville Island public market. Shopping, dining, and breweries. You could also catch a hockey game located right on the harbor at the end of the creek. On the other side of downtown near Coal Harbor, you can head to North Vancouver. There's a sea bus that runs from a terminal near the Canada Place, and for a few dollars you can travel across the inner harbor to North Vancouver, about 15 minutes which is home to new mall developments, and if you're feeling adventurous, you could even go skiing up Grouse Mountain, which is a 15-minute drive up the hill. The sea bus is a great system in Vancouver and runs every 15 minutes from morning until late night. Finally, I'd be sure to check out any yacht clubs or museums you're able to access in the area. Vancouver has a rich maritime history, and there is no shortage of ways to enjoy it. If you enjoyed this pilot guide slash harbor tour, be sure to let us know. Vancouver comes highly recommended to anybody considering a trip up the west coast of North America, and thank you for sailing with us.